How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. Now since this channel features a lot of custom water cooling, I've been getting a lot of questions lately, especially from people who are looking to get into it for the first time. So I figured I'd try to make some videos that are geared a little bit more towards beginners. Now one of the questions that seems to pop up just about every day is, is it worth it? So I figured a good place to start would be with a video that sort of explains the differences between air cooling and water cooling, uh, what to expect, and this way hopefully it will help someone to decide whether or not uh, it's going to be worth it to them. Air cooling is by far the most common method for cooling any of your heat generating components. Uh, air cooling essentially just consists of attaching a heat sink to the heat generating component. The thermal energy or heat is transferred into the heat sink and then eventually will dissipate into the surrounding air. Now this can be done passively, like the heat spreaders that are on your motherboard and your RAM, or it can be done actively, like the heat sinks that will be found on your CPU and GPU that have a fan or fans attached to them. Now in both cases, the heat sinks are usually designed to maximize surface area because the more air that it is able to come in contact with, the more effectively it's able to pass off the heat. Now when it comes to your CPU and your GPU, most coolers share the same general design. You have a block that's typically copper that comes in contact with your processing unit with a layer of thermal interface material in between. The heat is then transferred into heat pipes, which are typically copper. Along the heat pipes, you get stacks of fins, usually aluminum, uh, to maximize surface area to which fans or a fan is attached to blow air across the fins and carry the heat away. With water cooling, the principle is essentially the same. Uh, you still have a block that comes in contact with the processing unit. You still have a stack of fins, this time in the form of a radiator, with fans attached that blow air across the fins and transfer heat into the surrounding air. The key difference is rather than transferring the heat from the block to the fins via heat pipes, we're now pumping water through tubing and we're transferring the heat that way. In a properly configured loop where the water is flowing efficiently, it's moving at a fairly high rate and it's able to very effectively transfer heat from the block through the loop into the radiators and then eventually into the surrounding air. Now an important thing to understand when it comes to water cooling loops is that you don't have hot water leaving a block and then cold water coming back in. Uh, you can essentially think of the entire loop as one giant heat sink as the majority of the thermal energy is evenly distributed throughout the loop. So aside from maybe very slight discrepancies in temperature, uh, you're going to get essentially the same temperature throughout the entire loop. Now at this point you might be wondering, if they essentially do the same thing, which is better? Uh, to which I would reply, neither, or both. Because you see, whether you're air cooling or water cooling, as long as the components are able to adequately carry heat away from the processors, there's essentially no noticeable difference in performance. The main goal for any cooling solution is to simply ensure that the components operate within a temperature range that the manufacturer has deemed safe. So that being said, when asking which method of cooling is better in terms of performance, they're both fine. But that's not to say each doesn't have their own pros and cons. With air coolers, you're limited by how effectively the metal can transfer the heat, and then by how rapidly the moving air can dissipate that heat. Now, since metal heats up very rapidly, your fans typically have to ramp up in order to compensate for that. Now you can easily increase the cooling capacity of an air cooling unit by increasing the size of the heat sink and or increasing the amount of airflow that goes through it. Now the downside is that you could potentially end up with a very bulky and or very noisy unit. So I'd say the most obvious pro when it comes to air cooling is the low cost where the cons would be space constraints and the noise factor. Now with water cooling, since water has such great thermal properties, and it does not rapidly heat up the way that metal does, you end up with a very efficient cooling solution. Now an easy way to illustrate this is if you were to go outside on a hot day in direct sunlight and bring your metal heat sink and then a glass of water and let them sit in the sun for probably a fairly short amount of time, 
that heat sink would heat up to the point where it would be uncomfortable to the touch and could potentially even burn your skin. Whereas in that same amount of time, you could dip your finger in the water and it may have warmed up a little bit, but it certainly is not going to be at a temperature that's going to be uncomfortable or even burn your hand. Now keep in mind with water cooling, you're still gonna be dissipating the same amount of heat into the surrounding air as you would be with air cooling, but assuming you have a properly configured loop, you should be able to do that with relatively low fan speeds and thus have a quieter system. So the main advantages of water cooling are gonna be the efficiency, the flexibility, and the low noise factor, with the obvious downsides being the cost and the difficulty of configuration and installation. Now an all-in-one liquid cooler is able to bridge that gap quite well, but when it comes to custom loops, they can be very costly and very difficult to set up, especially for a beginner. So this brings us back to our original question, is water cooling worth it? Now coming from a guy who loves doing custom water cooling loops, if we're just talking about getting the most performance for your money, then no, water cooling is definitely not worth it. Now, if it's important for you to have a quiet system or you've already maxed out your performance and you're just looking to take it to the next level, I say go for it. Uh, even if you just like the way it looks and the cost is not an obstacle, go for it. Uh, at the end of the day, it's your system and it's your money. So if you want to water cool, just do it. Uh, as long as you're happy with the result, nobody can tell you that it wasn't worth it. So that's going to do it for this video. I really appreciate you guys checking out the channel. I hope that some of you found this video informative and encouraging. As always, if you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave them in the comments section below, and I will see you in the next video.